that's jazz, and uh, we have a group of people here who are going to spend some time today just talking about what jazz is all about. As many of you probably know, Oklahoma City was one time known as the capital of jazz, and uh, of course now we talk about Kansas City as being the jazz capital, but there's a lot that still remains about the kind of talent we have in Oklahoma City that we want to talk about. And I think this group is is the group to talk about that because they're representative of many people in our area who are involved in this kind of music. People who don't do this every day as a major living. And I'd like to introduce them to you now, beginning with our pianist, who is a television executive here at Channel 4, program director, uh, Bill Thrash. Hi, George. Thanks Are you sure Count that. Basie started this way? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Just hang in there. <laughs> <laughs> on base. Uh, we have a young man who's teaching in the private school right. uh, at, Corpus. Uh, at Corpus Christi, Marvin Williams, known throughout our area as an excellent bassist, and uh, I'm sure you'll see that today. That'll be evident. And above me here is our drummer who claims to be the elder statesman of this group, Roland Allen. Welcome, Roland. Uh, yeah, as I said in my opening remarks, uh, the jazz still flourishes, but in very small quarters in our area. And, and you guys have never played together before today, right? That's correct. That's, right. That's one of the things that fascinates me about jazz. Um, here you come from different disciplines, and you walk in here today, and but for a few minutes of tuning up and making sure you got the right bridges or whatever, uh, you jump right in and, and play great tunes like that. Incidentally, what was the name of that? That was uh, Blues for Unity. Blues for Unity, all right, all right. Maybe we got a new thing going here. <laughs> but uh, how, how do you do that? Well, each song have a, has a certain um, chord progression. And you just learn the chord, chord progressions, and anybody, you know, you learn the same ones, basically. And then, you know, like different musicians play the same songs slightly differently, but they still will fit into the same pattern. Now, that really means a lot to me. I, I'm sure that means that uh, you already know a lot of the answers about uh, what finger goes where and, and, and that sort of thing. Yeah, well, uh, that's mechanical. I mean, after a while, you just. Your fingers just go where they're supposed to go. You don't worry about it. What are you looking for in there that, that makes you know where to put those fingers or, or strike the sticks or whatever? If you count one, two, one, two, three, four, the four would be the one that you come down on. That begins the song. And pretty much universal to the point that we'll all play that way, more or less. Sometimes I cheat a little bit. Well, obviously, I, I'm not the musician you guys are, and, and you make a great sound, I think, for, for people who are who getting George, one the thing to time. remember, see, is that music, uh, there are rules to follow, and, there are, and we're trying to follow rules, but we're also trying to bend them a little bit, and we're right. also trying to feel the music, which is a big, important part of jazz, and we're also interpreting and improvising. Uh, but we're all familiar with those rules, and maybe that's what <laughs> keeps us in the same key, and, uh, and hopefully we will begin and end about the same time. Hopefully. Okay. <laughs> all right. Why don't we just, just take an example of that? Maybe if you just start off. Okay. Okay, well, this tune has a little intro. Not all jazz tunes or pop tunes have an intro quite this way, so it's not typical, but it's a, a familiar intro that the Ellington uh, band developed, and uh, it's a very popular song called Satin Doll, and uh, in this case, we have a little intro to lead us in, and then we go into the tune. And everybody will know where to jump in and, and do their own Well, let's thing. find out. <laughs> okay. Well, you're going to kick it off, right? Yeah. Go.
I see you know how to stop at the same time, too. I guess that's a plus. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we were talking about um, Oklahoma City as a former jazz town. People get together after a set and play all night. I've heard a lot of the old timers talk about that. I know you don't remember anything about that, do you? That's mine. <laughs> yes, but George fact, Beck, uh, yeah. Uh, it wasn't that far back, because I know what you're talking about, those early years, the 20s and 30s and 40s, where Oklahoma City was an important place, and a lot of musicians came out of here, Charlie Christian and uh, Basie and, you know, many others that uh, we all know about. But uh, even more recently, when I first met Roland was uh, in the mid-60s, was when he was playing with Dick Shreve over at Dick's Keyboard Club over on May Avenue, which was really a, a great place at that time. And uh, Dick, of course, I think said, uh, best pianist to ever come out of this part of the country. He's now in L.A. playing, and uh, Roland was uh, his drummer, and uh, I think he had Bill Michaels on bass, as I right. recall. I don't know where Bill is, but uh, that was a great group, and uh, Roland was uh, a part of that. That's where we met. It was a very exciting period, very exciting. Yeah, that was fun. Well, where does it go compared to some of your more modern groups? And I'm not talking about the current uh, disco, rock and roll, or whatever, your hard rock mm -hmm. thing, but in terms of music lovers, you just don't have the numbers coming out or participating in jazz as such. Uh, what do you think the reason is for that? Remember, George, there's some ex excellent players in Oklahoma City right now uh, working uh, regularly and playing great jazz, and it's going on in several clubs in Oklahoma City. And then also, I think what's exciting is what's happening uh, with the uh, College Lab Band programs, What's, uh, what Kidwell is doing at Central State and uh, at OCU. They have excellent uh, big band uh, jazz programs that are going on right now, and a lot of good players right. are in those bands. And right. uh, Needless to say, an awful lot of good players are coming out of those bands and going on to uh, more exciting musical things uh, after they graduate. So that's going on right now, and that makes it a pretty healthy climate. Uh, it's... Uh, it's not yeah. bad. It could always be better. But so uh, you think it'll come back to the point where people have a real appreciation well, for jazz and art? Music good. kind of goes in cycles. You know, um, about it takes about 20 years to make a complete cycle. In other words, to get back where it started. And and um, initially, you know, it was mainly just jazz and the old type rock and roll. Then they um, they started getting closer together. You know, because then a lot of jazz players started in in, into the um, rock scene. So that kind of changed that around a little bit. Now it's just about to the point where it's getting ready to go back to the old sound. In fact, I was out to Los Angeles um, not too long ago, and I've noticed they've um, some of the recordings they've made just recently in the last two or three years sound like something that was cut back in, in the late 50s. That brings to mind uh, one thing right quick before we go to a break, uh, that some people confuse jazz and blues and other kinds of music. Uh, the distinction there between jazz, say, and, and blues, is, is blues a form of jazz? Um, I would more or less say that blues is really the start of it all. <laughs> yeah. That's, Very well that's said. Really, really where it all started. And jazz is Back simply an old, improvisation old. of... Well, yeah, you know, it's like any other art form. It has to go ahead or it'll die, you know. So we started off with the, the old type, like Bessie Smith and what have you. And then eventually moved up into a more organized type, you know, where they started using a lot of instruments together. Then they started having arrangers and, you know, eventually got up to different forms, you know. So they... So now it's gotten to the point to where, as um, you know, like with, with the um, advent of disco, um, which is, you know, like a fad, you know, which this happens in music. They went and um, after a while, now the disco is even beginning to, it's not as, well, uh, violent <laughs> almost, I'd say, as it used to be. You know, it's calming down and... Um, I think it's all getting ready to come back, and I think that the interest in um, the younger people, you know, as, as was stated earlier about Ken out there at the, at the school. Also, it's um, quite a few high schools around now that are getting good jazz bands. Right. Good Absolutely. jazz bands. Yeah. yeah. In fact, um, 
Andre Francisco over at um, John Marshall had a very good um, stage band that I saw down at the Arts Festival, and I was quite impressed with him. Well, maybe we'll have to get some of them to come in, and right. maybe encouraging these young people, we might do another yes. jazz special one to get them to come in. But right now, we're going to have to take a break. I want to come back and talk about uh, a member who does something completely different uh, as an art form. We'll talk about that right after this. Before we left, we were talking about another aspect of one of our musicians' art, and it certainly is an art. He, he has done a magnificent job, I think, in wood carvings. Uh, Roland Allen, uh, you saw the opening shot of the show uh, of this bird, and, and Roland, what is this piece called uh, and the inspiration for it? I call that plain simple, Bird in Flight. And what I try to do, George, is highlight the grain in the wood, which is really my medium. I work with the grain in the wood because it's, it's different from every piece, with every piece of wood that I find, the grain is different. So it's like an adventure in wood. Very graceful piece. Uh, we, we sort of change texture a little bit uh, at this next one down here. It, it changes the feeling uh, of the man, uh, I assume, here, sort of doubled up. Uh, I won't dare try Call to Call man it. in agony. Man in agony. Right. Okay. And I've gotten a great response to that piece because just about everyone can relate to him. What and, kind um, of wood is that? That's made of gum wood, and that piece is about 20 years old, whereas the... Bird in Flight is a new one. The one on my right is my version of Confucius. Oh, a bit of uh, oriental. oriental. Yes, I know it's the Fu Manchu uh, mustache. Thing. Right, Fu Manchu type. That's now, which of these pieces was it that I was to take home? Man in Anguish. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> would I be so lucky? And uh, here's a freestanding piece uh, here that's sculpted in... Uh, uh, it looks familiar to me. It's called Martin Man, and it's a drawing that a young lady did of me. That, that was her interpretation of the way I look. I took oh. it upon myself to say Martin Man. Okay, I think that you may have a point there. 
except for the glasses. Well, anyway, uh, we also know that uh, besides being a tremendous drummer and uh, a man of art that, uh, as you can tell, he does very well, uh, Roland is also a singer. And we're going to get a little sample of that right now. talented group as they say right on brother uh, <laughs> the time goes too quickly uh, I we just we just don't have enough time I guess that's what it boils down to because I could listen to this all day and I'm tempted to say as they often say hey can you come back or, or whatever but uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed it um, each of you uh, Bill Thrash Marvin Williams and Roland Allen have really made this an exciting show and uh, I think that we'd like to to do some more one day on on what jazz is all about and and help with this revival of jazz as it were in our community and show off the great talent that we have so uh, you know maybe if people like it they might write and tell us and we might try to do it again sometime any of you guys have any parting shots? Thanks a lot. 
Well, thank you. Uh, hey, I really appreciate that someone is out here trying to get everything back together again. Very good. Well, why don't we just kind of close out with a little sample of what it's all about. Uh, and uh, I'll just say thank you again, and thank you out there. Thank you.